All right, welcome back to Boy of the Painted Cave. Today we're going to be reading chapter three. Um, quick, quick recap of chapter two. Uh, we know that Tao is out on his own because the leader Volt has kicked him out because he did not come back with the rabbit. So Volt is saying that once he comes back with the rabbit, he can join the rest of the tribe. So Tao is out there looking for the rabbit and he sees the wolf dog again. Um, he notices that the wolf dog has a sharp bone lodged in its jaw, so he helps the wolf dog out um, by pulling out that bone. Um, later in the chapter, um, Tao is still searching for another rabbit or food to bring back, and he stumbles on this place called the Slow. Um, so this place um, is thought to be evil by his tribe members, but um, Tao doesn't really see an issue with it, and he goes into the Slow anyway. Um, when he gets there, he hears this really weird, loud shriek, um, and he thinks he's about to run to an evil spirit. So that's where we're going to pick up today with chapter three. All right, here we go. Chapter three. Tao found a narrow spot along the stream and vaulted across. Picking his way carefully, he crept forward step by step. He had not gone far when the fiendish scream came again. It was followed by a series of long hissing sounds and sobbing moans. For a moment, Tao hesitated, uncertain, his heart pounding. Maybe the clan people were right. Maybe there were demons and evil things in this shadowy place after all. If there were, he wondered, did he really want to see them? He waited, trying to make up his mind. Then he shrugged his shoulders and pushed on again, quietly, cautiously, watching each step. As he drew closer, the loud, piercing shrieks continued. They filled his ears and echoed through the sodden marshland. It was a strange, violent sound, one that he had never heard before. He moved carefully, pushing his way through the briar thickets and around clumps of ferns that grew higher than his head. At any moment, he expected some evil demon to jump out of the underbrush. His heart leapt as the screams came again. They were only a few paces away now, and they came from the thick gro growth of bracken ferns near the base of a lone oak tree. He moistened his lips with the tip of his tongue and clutched his spear tightly, a knot of fear in the pit of his stomach. He took a deep breath and pushed his way through the alders. Then he stepped into the clearing, ready to come face to face with the evil spirit. Instead, he saw a demon with wings, an angry eagle owl sitting on the forest floor, protecting her nest from the little wolf dog. Even for an eagle owl, she was huge, almost as high, high as Tao's waist. She loomed over the wolf dog as he crept in to get beneath her wings. She flew up, snapping her beak, slashing at him with her sharp talons. She hissed and screamed, her brownish-red feathers ruffling up in bristling rage. Her glossy black pupils, ringed with orange, glared back at the wolf, daring him to try again. Once more, the wolf rushed in to chase her off the nest, but the owl would not be led astray. She hovered over the three white eggs, protecting them from the hungry wolf. For a few moments, Tao stood aside, watching the battle. He liked the eagle owl's fierce courage. If there be demons, he whispered, you must be one of them. Yet he felt sorry for her too, for now she had a second enemy to face. Besides, he was afraid the little wolf dog might get hurt. Tao lifted his spear and leaned forward to push her away. She turned on him in savage fury beating him with her wings, slashing at him with her curved talons. He threw up his arms to protect his face as she flew at him. Again, the wolf dog dashed in to draw her off, but the feathered demon refused to be chased away. Now the boy and wolf took turns, taunting her, trying to divert her attention. Each time they came too close, she turned quickly, screaming, slashing, driving them off. Soon, Tao and the wolf dog were panting heavily as they tried again and again to reach the eggs. But the owl was tiring, too. She was slowing down. She rocked back and forth on her short legs, her wings drooping, 
weary from the uneven fight. Now Tao watched closely as the wolf dog attacked, each time leading the eagle owl further from the nest. Then he saw his chance. On the next rush, the big owl lost her balance, floundering on the forest floor. Before she could recover, Tao rushed in and grabbed two of the large white eggs. Without looking back, he vaulted away, out of danger. Come, little friend, he shouted to the wolf dog. We have enough for both. He hobbled off under the trees, the wolf dog following as the owl vented its anger in wild shrieks of rage. When they were far enough away, Tao stopped, panting. He sat down with his back against the trunk of an old birch tree. He cracked one of the eggs on a stone, opening it and dipping his tongue into the thick fluid. It tasted fresh and clean. It is good, he said. The eggs were newly laid. Then he gave it to the wolf dog. He made a hole in the second one, tilted his head back and sucked out the contents. The wolf dog finished his and looked up as if expecting more. No, said Tao, we will let the the she-owl keep her single egg. The season is early. She will lay more. He looked down at the little animal. You are learning to hunt on your own. That is good. But it is not good to fight the eagle owls. You must find something smaller. The wolf tilted its head and looked up for a moment. Then, as if he understood, he ran on ahead and disappeared into the woods. There were sandy glades within the slough where cl scattered clumps of bunch grass and bilberry bushes grew. Tao hobbled from one to another, poking with his spear, hoping to scare up hidden game. He walked slowly from bush to bush, working his way up one side of the long glade and down the other. The morning was almost over and he was about to give up when a swamp hare jumped out of one of the bushes and dashed across his path. Tao barely had time to brace himself. Taking quick aim, he threw his spear at the dodging animal. The weapon missed its mark, and Tao groaned as the rabbit escaped. A moment later, Tao saw the wolf dog come into the glade and begin sniffing from bush to bush. The scent of the rabbit was strong, and he soon found what he was looking for. The little animal began to sl a slow, stalking movement, creeping forward on its belly. He lifted each paw slowly setting it down in the grass carefully. Tao watched patiently at the end of the glade. Once again, the hare suddenly dashed out of cover. The wolf dog bounded after it, following a zigzag course, twisting and swerving with each turn of its quarry. Tao raised his spear, steadying himself as the wolf, dog, as the wolf drove the rabbit directly towards him. He aimed carefully and, as the frightened animal passed, he struck it cleanly on the first throw. As he picked up the rabbit, Tao smiled. You will be a good hunter, he told the wolf dog. First you find the eggs of the owl, now you find a rabbit. Even as Tao spoke, the little wolf was running on ahead, going from bush to bush. With its head down, it sniffed the ground to pick up a scent. It worked in and around the thickets and between the tussocks of grass. Before long, another rabbit leapt out from under a bush. It ran around in circles, a brown whirl fur, with the little wolf dog chasing close on its heels. In its panic, it turned and headed straight for Tao. At the last moment, it saw the boy and doubled back. Tao groaned. The animal had escaped again. Then he felt a quick wave of relief as he saw it run directly into the waiting jaws of the wolf dog. <sniffs> Tao's heart was full of joy. The sun was still high in the heavens, and they already had two rabbits. He sat on his heels in the middle of the glade, and with his flint knife, he skinned one of the hares and fed it to the little wolf. The other rabbit he tucked under his belt to take back to camp. As soon as the wolf dog had finished his meal, Tao put out his hand. This time, the little animal allowed itself to be touched. You are a good friend, said Tao patting the wolf dog's head and scratching him behind the ears. I will call you Ram, after the spirit of the hunt. They stayed together for most of the day, roaming back and forth through the slow, and by late afternoon, Tao had three more rabbits and a leather pouch full of lemmings. When he was ready to leave, he looked down at Ram. 
He wished he could take the wolf dog back to camp with him, but he knew that Volt and the other hunters would kill it. Stay, he told Ram. This is a good place, and here you will be safe. There is much food, and you will not go hungry. As Tao walked away, the wolf dog started to follow. The boy turned. No, Ram, he said. You cannot come with me. Stay here in the slow and wait. I will come back again, and we will hunt together. The little wolf dog tilted his head to one side, and Tao knew he still did not understand. Go back, he ordered. When Ram did not move, Tao picked up stones and handfuls of sod and threw them at the animal. Go back, he repeated. You cannot come with me. For another moment, Ram stood motionless, his yellow eyes staring at Tao. But when he saw the boy reach down to pick up more stones, he turned and ran into, off into the slow. As soon as the wolf dog had disappeared, Tao hurried on his way. It was growing dark. He heard a nightjar thrill. A squirrel scurried across his path and out, of, out on the plains. The prowling hyenas started their high-pitched giggles. Even in the darkness, Tao knew his way by the gray shadows of the trees, the boulders, and the shapes of the cliffs. When he limped into camp, the clan women were cooking over the fires. They smiled when they saw the rabbits and the lemmings hanging from his belt. He went first to the hut of Kala and gave her a handful of mussels and three lemmings. Then he went to the center of the camp, where Volt and Garth were standing by the big fire. The gruff leader snatched the rabbits from the boy's hand. He held them up to the light of the fire, his dark eyes wide with surprise. These are freshly killed, he said. Tao winced and stared at the ground. I cannot find the other, he said. It is good for you that you caught these, said Volt, glaring down at him. From now on, when you go out with the hunters, you will watch and learn and keep your mind on the hunting. Tao leaned on his spear, shifting from one foot to the other. He did not want to disobey, yet the anger within him would not let him be silent. I have ram now, he thought. With the wolf dog, I could bring back more food than the hunters. Instead, he said, I will hunt alone. What I catch, I will bring back to the camp. Volt shook his head violently the ring of the bear claws around his neck rattling. You are like a stone, he roared. You learn nothing. I try to tell you, but you do not listen. The big man threw up his hands and looked hopelessly over his shoulder at Garth, who had come up behind him. Go then, he said to Tao. Go on your own way, but hear my words. You will eat only when you bring in food. Once again, Tao felt the heat of anger rising in his cheeks. Maybe if we had a wolf dog, he said, it would help with the hunting. Volt's face grew red with rage, the livid scars standing out on his cheek. We will have no evil wolf dogs at this camp, he shouted. They are a curse of demons. We will hunt like men, not like evil spirits. If wolf dogs are evil, then why do the mountain people hunt with them? asked Tao, surprised that he was speaking to Volt this way. Startled by the boy's impudence, impudence. <laughs> Volt sat on the ground and grunted. Enough, he said. If you would hunt with an evil wolf dog, then go. Go live with the mountain people. Garth threw back his head and laughed grimly. Cross the river into their land and they will track you down like a jackal. Tao shrugged. He felt there was little use in talking to these men, who would listen only to demons and evil spirits. Later that night, Tao sat by the fire in front of Kala's hut. He looked up at the overhanging cliffs and saw the endless flame burning bright in front of the entrance to the big cave. He had spent many winters in the protection of its shelter, but deep inside, through twisting tunnels and narrow passageways, lay the secret cavern. Only the chosen ones had ever seen it, but Tao had heard about it many times. It was a huge chamber with its walls covered with life-size paintings of horses, bisons, and lions. Even the ceilings were painted with pictures of deer, bear, and boars. Here the rituals of manhood were held. Here the chosen ones were selected. Tao knew that each clan had its own secret place, a special chamber hidden far back in the cliffs. Each clan had its image maker also 
two or three chosen ones picked by the elders to paint in the caves. But Greybeard was the old master, the shaman, wandering from clan to clan, teaching and painting images of the great game animals to bring good luck to the hunting. Tao thought of this often. If only he were born of a leader, or even a hunter, then maybe then he might someday be a ch become a chosen one. Many times he had asked Kala about his parents, but each time she shook her head. You are too young, she always said. Besides, it does not matter. But now he was older, and it did matter. All right, so that was the end of Chapter 3. So now you're going to go back to Otis. You're going to click on your Assessments tab. You're going to go back to Questions of uh, from Boy of the Painted Cave. You'll click that open. And you'll be answering the questions for chapter three right down here. So um, first one is reread Tao's conversation with Volt. What does this uh, section tell you about Volt? Explain with examples. And second question, are Tao and Volt alike? How? All right. Thank you very much.